Well, I'm with uh, Peter Kelly, who um, might be an administrative officer <laughs> or an administrative secretary, but he's more fondly known as Mr. Onken. And Peter, we're just looking at this building, which I gather is about to be demolished. What exactly is it? Well, it started life as the stables to Hawthorne Villa. Now, Hawthorne Villa is now, in fact, the Commissioner's offices, been extended and altered over the years, built in 1852, finished in 53, by Mrs Chubb, who was the, uh, the widow of a, a Royal Naval Commander. Uh, a long tale to that of her going to prison through debt, but we, we won't go into that. But basically, the stable block out behind, when the Commissioners um, purchased the building, uh, was utilised for a number of purposes, it led to tenants, and eventually, when they started their own refuse service, then they utilised um, some of the building. And then when they went mechanised, they in fact roofed over the yard uh, very simply, very cheaply. Uh, Cherry Kane, the architect, just produced a scheme of metal roof trusses on pillars which dropped in behind the stable uh, yard wall and also against the stable and consequently they doubled the space virtually overnight in, in which they could put in their petrol driven um, refuse vehicle and of course it acted as a store for, for other equipment as well. What year did they actually purchase it? Was it when they were first established? Oh no, long after. Uh, they purchased it in 1922 and with it went a uh, three acre field uh, to which the Henry Broom Noble Trustees gave a thousand pounds towards the total two thousand pound cost uh, on the proviso that the field was turned into a playground and that is in fact the school road recreation ground uh, which still exists and is still used for that purpose. In fact it's been upgraded because they built the youth centre in the corner of it. So this really is a relic of a century ago with the old petrol pump it's seen the early days the horse and cart collection of refuse right up to the modern vehicles. Um, do you still keep some vehicles in here now? Yes, uh, all the vehicles which are used for house maintenance, uh, maintenance in the park, etc. Uh, the smaller vehicles, cars, pickup trucks, vans, etc. kept here. And, and the idea is, of course, to, to replace it with a new uh, purpose-built building uh, which will accommodate them all. But the huge refuse trucks, of course, must be stored elsewhere. Yes, they've gone down to Snugborough. The commissioners, they couldn't find anywhere in Onken, so we ended up buying a plot down at Snugborough and building a brand new refuse garage. So uh, the, uh, the refuse collectors sort of meet here, go down there, uh, do their collections and th this is their canteen and depot still in this position. The petrol pump to which you referred of course was put in when we got our first um, petrol driven vehicle and it, it really is a relic where you have to turn the handle first of all to bring the piston up so to speak to fill with petrol and then as you push it down it then puts the petrol through so you can imagine the time it would take to fill um, a large modern day uh, vehicle but in fact that's what was happening up to five years ago. So it would have taken almost as much time as having to take all the rubbish up to the point of air and come back? Indeed. <laughs> well we've just come through the bin garage Peter and we're standing in a little courtyard almost at the back. There's a very old looking building attached to it. What is that? Well, that's in fact the, the end gable of the original stables to, uh, to Hawthorne Villa. And in fact, where we're standing, you say, is a courtyard. This was actually a 1970s extension, which was built in brick with a flat roof on the end of the bin garage. Uh, so there was more space available for, for vehicles. And incredibly, by the 1990s, this was condemned as unsafe. And the old building was left up. The 1970s building was pulled down and then this um, metal cladding was put on the gable of the bin garage and uh, we found somewhere else to keep some of the vehicles. Mm. But going back to the old building, uh, as I say, this was the stables to, to Hawthorne Villa. Upstairs was the hayloft. Downstairs at this end was the stables. Then you had the carriage house. But when the commissioners bought the premises in 1922, their refuse collection at that time was done by a contractor with a horse and cart. Well, eventually they decided to buy their own horse, their own cart, and they're used here as a depot. And the rubbish would be brought in and tipped, and then sorted. And from the sorting, the tin cans would be taken somewhere and the night soil would be taken off to fields. But they let some of the premises, and they let it to the Isle of Man dairies. And the farmers in Onken brought their milk in, 
which went into one of the rooms, the old coach house, where it was then sort of decanted and the dairy man the next day went out and delivered it. Well, after a while, the health authorities thought it was not a good thing mm. uh, for the milk to be there and the refuse piled outside. So I'm afraid the dairies had to go elsewhere. <laughs> but we continued to um, recycle uh, the rubbish in that position. You, it, you said that in later years when the bin men were collecting before the wheelie bins came in, that they had a little perk here. Oh, indeed, because um, the commissioners became motorised, I think, in the late 40s uh, with a vehicle. But, of course, everything in those days was in galvanised bins, which they tipped out. Well, if anybody had left any metal uh, out to be binned, the bin men would put it in a tray that was under the lorry. And as we progressed into bigger and better uh, refuse vehicles, there was still a tray underneath mm. and all the metal would be put into the old stable and then twice a year uh, Mr Osborne or Mr Smith, the scrap merchant, would come up, uh, bring it all out and the perks uh, were there for the bin men that they actually got the, um, his, his, his money for, for all the, um, the metal that had been stored. So even in those days a certain amount of sorting and recycling that Mrs Crow would be very proud of? Oh, very much so. Well, whether she'd be proud or not, I don't know, but yes, it was going on. Now, upstairs, in what had been the hayloft, uh, when the commissioners uh, expanded with the number of houses that they had and decided to take on their own maintenance staff, then that became the joiners' workshop. Now there's a brand new workshop which complies with health and safety and the rest, but the, the workbenches from the I suppose early 60s etc are still up there it's now just used for store well very little storage because the building is due to come down very shortly